Can you take me through what recently happened? What was recently found? You know, a few months ago, um, some divers along with History Channel came to us and said we found something very unusual in the ocean. Uh, they were doing an exploration for World War II aircraft. So they're looking for something very different than they found. Uh, but through those searches underwater, they came across an object. Of course, it didn't look the vintage of World War II. It looked more, uh, much more modern. So they came to us um, at the Kennedy Space Center and showed us some stills, showed us some video underwater. And overlooking through those, it became pretty apparent that it definitely was of space shuttle origin. And then looking closer, of course, we can confirm it was Space Shuttle Challenger. How did you determine what it was? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, over 70 years, we've launched a lot of rockets, right? And a lot of those rockets stage, which means they put pieces into the ocean when they're, when they're done. So there's a lot of hardware out there. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure what we were going to see. But we're looking at those, um, you know, looking at rivet patterns, looking at the materials, the structure, uh, how things were connected, put together, and then looking at even things like uh, perhaps primer or painted surfaces, uh, very unique to space shuttle construction. Uh, so we looked through those, and then what really helped us as well is, uh, as you may remember, the space shuttle was covered with a heat protective uh, surface, a thermal protection system, and that comprised over 30,000 tiles, silica tiles that were all over the, uh, the bottom of the space shuttle. And we start seeing pieces of those still adhered to the material. So that was really what helped us uh, have clear and convincing evidence this was space shuttle challenging. In the initial video looking at that, uh, Emily, it does look like it could be one of the largest pieces we've ever recovered from Challenger. Where is this artifact going? Where is it going to live? Well, the artifact now is, is still in the ocean. Um, you know, after we found this, we have to decide what the next steps may be. And there's a range of options on the table. Um, the one thing I can assure you what we're going to do is make sure we honor the legacy of the Challenger crew. That's first and foremost in our minds. Is there anything you can learn from it or is it just kind of an artifact at this point? Well, two things. Uh, one, you know, readily apparent, it's something, of course, we haven't seen in many years. So looking at the material, how it, how it survived um, and aged in those conditions out in the water, there's certainly science that you can learn from that. Uh, I think in a bigger sense, what it really helps us do is it reminds us of the loss of Challenger and then it helps us really focus on the future. And that may say a little bit unusual to say, but we have a very robust lessons learned program. Um, so looking at this piece of Challenger reminds us that we can certainly learn from our past through the lens of history and looking forward. So that reinvigorates us to, to even be more committed to learning the lessons going forward. Uh, a Challenger, um, I think a lot of our viewers perhaps either don't remember it or weren't even born when this happened. Can you tell me why this was so impactful and why it brings back really hard memories for a lot of people who maybe even weren't directly involved, but perhaps just saw it happen live? The public and American people get very connected to their astronauts. Um, you know, for us, they're our friends and our colleagues, but they're also our heroes. And the American people identify with that, which is a wonderful connection we all have together. So when we had something like Challenger, uh, where our heroes are going to work, going into space uh, to improve life on Earth, and that's why they do that. Um, and we lost them on that mission. It became a very personal loss for a lot of folks. Um, I know when this piece was found, my emotions went back to that day of loss. And, and hearing from a lot of folks over the last couple of weeks, um, I heard a very similar sentiment, uh, sentiment Emily, that folks remembered where they were what they felt like to brought them back to 1986 and, um, and the special crew we had. I'm kind of looking back at what has happened, does it make it scarier? What's gonna happen here in the next several years with sending uh, people back to the moon and to Mars? So there, there's these exciting rockets and missions to go back to the moon, stay and learn, and then go on to Mars. So, but as we do that, we're very, very mindful. That's a challenge that, you know, it's very difficult doing this. So we don't want to miss the lessons of the past. Uh, we learned uh, through Apollo 1, Apollo 13, Challenge in Columbia, that um, you know, there's a risk going into space. And we have to make sure we bring that risk down as low as possible. So learning from those incidences. So I think it's, you know, it's a very exciting time going forward. We're certainly ready for the challenge. We're, we're meeting it head on, and we're very excited. But this is a, a perfect time to reflect at the past and say, you know, how did these missteps occur? What can we learn from those? And then how do you apply them in the future? 
And that's really the purpose of the Apollo Challenger Columbia Lessons Learned program is to, to look at those and say, you know, what are we doing today? Does anything look similar? And how can we do course corrections now to not follow those same steps 